So it's a quick slide to show this about oxymercuration. It produces alcohols or it can produce ethers. You get unsubstituted alkene. So eventually, the solvent ends up on the more substituted carbon. That's regioselective. The stereochemistry part is that the OH and the mercury end up on opposite sides, which eventually is the OH and the hydrogen you add. And you're responsible for knowing this step, but not this step for mechanism. So you get the Markov and carbon product, and you get the trans stereochemistry. Now taking a look at oxymercuration. So it's a little different than before. Oxymercuration involves HG mercury. So if we look at an, another example, alkene, uh, this would use something with mercury. So HG, number of alkenes, one and two. Here we add H and solvent. So whatever the solvent ends up being here, a lot of times it's something like water or an alcohol. That's what I have alcohol. And that's what also you add. So you add hydrogen and whatever the solvent is. Um, and you add it to the Markovnikov side, so you always add it to the uh, side, so if it's water being OH, add it trans. You always add it to the more substituted carbon. So the OH and H would be trans. Um, so it's regioselective because it picks the more substituted carbon, so that's the place that add, uh, solvent would add. We also, the stereochemistry notice ends up being trans. So the H that you added and the solvent, in this case it was water, OH, would always be trans to each other and there's no carbocations as well, so no, don't need to worry about rearrangements. So what actually happens here with the mechanisms? So you have this mercury, you have this HGOAC. Um, and when you can, what happens is the OAC leaves, the mercury has a plus charge. You can draw it that way, so the acetyl group leaves. So you have OAC, mercury the plus charge, and a lone pair, right? Some metal, so things are a little weird. In one step, what happens is the mercury, the pi bond is the electrophile. The pi bond will react with the mercury. At the same time, the lone pair in the mercury, remember this is a metal, so it's lots of extra electrons, will come and react with the carbon, um, one of the carbons of the pi bond. So what happens is you form this three-membered three ring, this merconium ion. And this is the most stable intermediate. And you notice what happens is the mercury adds on one face, and so it's this three-membered ring, right? So the mercury either from the top or it can from the bottom. Now the interesting part here is when the mercury adds, you have two different types of carbons here. You have a secondary carbon and a tertiary carbon. And it turns out the weaker bond, the more reactive site, is going to be the tertiary one, right? Because that's the more delta plus. Right? If you think about carbocations, there's no, there are no carbocations here, but you can think about this position right here, the more substituted carbon is going to be the one where the solvent is going to want to react. Right? The solvent is going to want to come there and do an SN2 type reaction. So this is just showing you a little bit more detail. Right? You have your pi bond. If you had carbon, let's see, you had carbon 1, carbon 1 and 2. 2 is more substituted. First, you do that step where you have the mercury, the plus charge, and lone pair. You can either come from the top or the bottom. You have a secondary and a tertiary carbon, secondary and tertiary. And the solvent's always going to go for the more substituted carbon. Right? Even though there are no carbocations, what's going to happen is the mercury and the solvent, the OH, solvent and mercury are going to end up on opposite sides. And that's going to give you that trans product. The last step you're not required to know much about. So the mercury's on there, there's this BH4, and that's gonna essentially replace the mercury with a hydrogen. So similar to the hydroboration, once you get the boron on there, you just replace it with an OH here. Once you have this trans, the solvent it add, trans to the mercury, you're just gonna add BH4, you don't need to know the mechanism, just replace this, replace the mercury with an H. And you're fine, and you'll see that they're still trans to each other. This is just to remind you and highlight that there are no carbocations involved with uh, oxymercuration. So oxymercuration, right? You never would rearrange. Whereas with your dilute H2SO4, those hydration reactions, you actually did rearrangements. So with mercury, no carbocation rearrangements whatsoever. All right, taking a look at this, an actual look at the oxymercuration mechanism. So it's a label of the carbons in the pi bond one and two. And I'm going to add a extra stereo center out here to help clarify what's going on here. So what's going to happen, we know that this is going to add anti, right? We know that, and we also know that the solvent in this case is methanol. So that's going to end up on the more substituted carbon. 
and we know it's going to have to be trans to whatever we add. So for the original H on carbon 2, I label H A. H A will have to be here, and the one we're adding is going to be H B. H4, and we're going to call those fours are all they're all H Bs. You'd notice what happens. The solvent we added is trans to the H we added, which makes sense. We knew that was going to be happening, trans addition to stereochemistry. We also notice carbon 1, carbon 2, the solvent ends up on the more substituted carbon. We also make, all right, the other product we're going to make, and the stereochemistry is the same here, we're actually going to make some diastereomers now. So HA was on there originally, that would be on the same side as the solvent we added, HB is the one we're adding, so it would be trans. So let's actually break this down now in the mechanism. So what happens in the mechanism, if I show one version, which you can do here, the mercury, and there's the pi bond. On there, the mercury is gonna have Hg, OAC, the plus charge in the mercury, and it has a lone pair. It's a little strange. The first bond reaction is the pi bond reacts, and at the same time, the mercury comes back and goes there. So if we had carbon 1 and carbon 2, they can come from either side. We're showing one version. What's that going to give us? It's going to give us... All right, so what that gave us was the mercury on the top. We could also, from the bottom, I'm showing one version here. You could draw in some wedges and hatches if you want to. It's going away. And the next part is the solvent is going to react, right? The solvent is going to choose one of the two carbons. And it's actually going to choose carbon one. And we know that because we know that the, the solvent ends up with the more substituted carbon. It's also the, so that's the carbon that's going to actually have react. So the nucleophile is going to go there. It's like an SN2 type reaction. The nucleophile bumps up. So the resulting product is, you can see the trans, the mercury is trans onto the solvent. The solvent came from the back side, from this three-membered ring, like an SN2 type reaction, right? So you see the solvent's there. Essentially, we'll do a deprotonation at this point. So we'll lose the hydrogen that can come from the solvent. We can take that. We could just make H plus. So we have minus H plus. And then what we have is the final product as far as mechanisms part that you need to know. H A. Carbon two, carbon one, carbon two, carbon one. The mer the mercury is right here. H G O A C. And this point, that's the point where we have the step two, B H four. And that's what, where we add, essentially, in this case, HB. You don't need to know the mechanism for that, but you need to know at the end of the day, what happens is HB is going to replace this. And so HB and the solvent, HB and the solvent end up on opposite sides. So just to summarize and compare these two things, oxymercuration, we get the anti Markovnikov carbon product, so the OH ends up in the less substituted carbon, and it's a syn addition. It's a syn addition. You're responsible for knowing this first step. The pi bond reacts with the boron and the H comes. Second step, you're not worried about knowing that. Oxymercuration, it's a Markovnikov product. You get a trans addition. You make a merconium ion, this three membered ring, the two arrows as well. You do an SN2 where the solvent reacts with the more substituted carbon. Pick that up, you get the merc you get the mercury and the OH on opposite sides, and then eventually the mercury just gets replaced with the hydrogen, and you get the trans uh, stereochemistry.